Hello YouTubers, welcome back to another Tesla vlog with me, Adam Well Informed. So if you're an EV owner or about to buy a Tesla Model 3, Polestar 2 or Hyundai on it 5 or any other electric car for that matter, you'll need to charge your car or it probably won't move very far. Most people will charge from home where it will generally be the cheapest and most convenient method to charge. I initially plan to incorporate public charging within this video for those without home charging capabilities. However, this will probably be best served as a separate video now. Therefore, focusing on just home charging, the difference between switching to a more EV friendly electric tariff and not could be as big as £24 a month or £300 or $400 a year. The difference between me renewing my electric tariff and switching to a dedicated EV tariff was extremely similar to that example. Mine would have been £23 more expensive to charge a car if I stayed. So nailing down the right tariff for yourself and your circumstances can make running an EV filthy cheap compared to a petrol or gas car. These methods aren't just UK exclusive either, some of these options will be available outside the UK too, but knowing what to look for could help save you time and money. According to the Department for Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy in the UK, our average electric tariff price in 2020 was 17.2 pence per kilowatt hour in the UK. But did you know you can change your home electric tariff to a more EV friendly tariff and penalty free if you are out of a fixed deal? You should really check before switching tariffs that you aren't going to get stung by an exit fee of some kind. I personally switched within a 49 day window of my tariff ending so I avoided the exit fee by just waiting a few extra days to be within that window. The main advantage of these EV tariffs is that they can offer a tariff rate of three times less than the UK average price at around five pence per kilowatt hour during set times and it can be even lower depending on the tariff and the time of day. Running an EV you ultimately have more choice in how to fill up your car than a fossil car in which you have to rely on using local petrol stations or gas stations. I used a Tesla supercharger just last weekend and it was located on some motorway services. It was priced no different to any other supercharger that I visited, whereas the petrol station just a few hundred metres away from where I was, was charging over 20% the average UK fuel price at £1.50 a litre, and that's just plain extortionate. Even if you're new to electric cars, I will inform you of the basics to help you compare charging costs for any electric car that you're interested in. So literally anyone can then estimate their charging costs. And if you're an EV owner, you can get a more definitive estimate if you know your average watt hour per mile for your vehicle too. After watching the video, if you want to just focus on one segment of the video, don't forget I actually chopped the video into little segments so you can easily navigate back to the, that part after watching the video at any time. So let's go save some money hopefully. So let's quickly establish how to work out your charging costs for your EV vehicle. This is the easiest method to work out an estimated fuel charge cost and should be a beginner friendly way to follow. In order to work out your charging costs, you need three key bits of data. First thing you need is the battery capacity of your electric car. You can find this on Google in just a couple of minutes. The Tesla Model 3 SR Plus has roughly a 50 kilowatts hour battery, so it's a nice easy round number to work with. The second bit of information you need is the tariff cost in question. This is usually charged per kilowatt hour, and whether you're using a public charger or charging from home, you should have an advertised tariff rate from the provider to work out the costs. For example, here is my tariff. I have two rates because I am offered different rates depending on what time I'm using electricity, but I'll talk about that a little later. I currently charge my Tesla Model 3 during the 5p per kilowatt hour tariff time. I will explain how easy that is to set up a little later in the video too. Therefore, in a very hypothetical scenario of charging from zero, which never happens, it would cost me 5 pence per kilowatt hour used. If I fill the full 50 kilowatt hour battery, it will cost me just £2.50 for a full charge. Final bit of data is your annual mileage. Using this, you can then work out your monthly home charging costs by establishing your monthly mileage then dividing that by the vehicle's range. So 10,000 miles per annum is 833 miles a month. With a vehicle range of 263 miles, I need to charge 3.1 times. So let's round that up to four full charges. A sing the single full charge was £2.50. Multiply that by four, we have a monthly charging cost of around £10 a month for 200 kilowatt hours of power or 1,052 miles worth of range. If you don't own an electric vehicle, this is the easiest way to work it out. If you want to work out how it would change your estimated annual electric consumption, using that same figure as before, you need 200 kilowatt hours of power per month. 
Annualizing that, it would make 2,400 kilowatt hours of extra power needed on top of your annual household usage. So you could actually look at your existing electric tariff and work out a price. Then subsequently replace the electric unit rate to 5 pence for the car consumption and simulate how much you could save just on the electric car charging proportion. If you're an existing owner and want to know the most precise way of using the average watt hour miles, I'll briefly explain how to do that. You can divide the capacity of your battery by that figure, so 50 kilowatt hours or 50 watt hours divided by 250 watt hour miles would give you a real world, uh, real world range of 200 miles. If we compare this to the easy method mentioned just a moment ago, the full charge crush would still be £2.50 in this situation because the car's battery capacity and tariff hasn't changed. However, what has changed is how many miles you're getting per charge. It's not 263 miles range, it's 200 miles range on this occasion. If we divide our monthly mileage of 833 miles a month by 200, We'd now need to charge 4.1 times instead of 3.1 times, meaning we'd need to fully charge one whole time more than before, and that difference is around £2.50 a month on a 5 pence per kilowatt hour of tariff. So how do you charge from home, and what's the biggest difference when it comes to charging from home? Take a look at the video in the top right hand side of the screen if you want to know more about your home charging options. But focusing on two of the most popular charging methods, we have the universal mobile charger, aka using your conventional home socket, so you can use a trusty three pin socket here in the UK. And this yields a slow charging rate of two kilowatts an hour, which is roughly about 10 miles an hour, and is generally referred to as the granny charger for that particular reason. If you install a seven kilowatts home charging unit like myself, your car can get seven kilowatts an hour, or roughly 30 miles an hour which is plenty for when you top up every other day. An average driver will do about 10,000 miles a year or 30 miles a day. So it will be plenty powerful for the average household as you could replenish around 120 miles in four hours in theory. If you generate your own power via solar panels, it's also possible to fill up your car via a home charge unit. If you have this facility and you can have a charging unit that can deliver that, then this will be your free home charging option. Some of you will say, yeah, you have to pay for panels, and that's sort of correct as there is an upfront cost, but this is free energy. It costs nothing to harness the power of the sun. Potentially the revenue of selling that to kilowatt hour to the grid, but the cost to charge your own car rather than selling that unit may have been far greater, so it's just an ideal situation being able to produce your own power and there's just no homegrown alternative for petrol or gas alternatives to this. So what are your EV friendly home electric tariffs looking like at present and what are the requirements to get one? These tariffs are becoming more widely available by utility providers in the UK and they are EV friendly because they offer such low rates to charge your electric car, but that rate is super low but only for a set period of time. This set period of time is usually outside peak hours of electric energy consumption. So super cheap charging is usually early in the morning or at night time where prices are offered by the grid to the provider at a much lower price. This actually helps the grid balance itself out at times as if there is an excess supply of electricity rather than let it go to waste it's offered at a really low rate to the provider and they then pass that on to you. If you utilize Octopus's agile tariff this will become more familiar. Uh, however, what you need to know is that these set periods are usually four to five hours at a time. So ideally, you need to at least a seven kilowatt home charger or a smart meter to access these tariffs. If you don't have a smart meter, the provider can possibly install one at your property for free to allow you to get hold of these tariffs. Just a quick reminder, please remember to support my channel by hitting the like, subscribe button, notification bell. Just a quick gesture really helps me out if you enjoy Tesla EV content like this. So what tariff am I using? I'm currently using Octopus Energy here in the UK. Here is my Octopus Go tariff on the screen. I'm currently paying five pence during the hours of 12.30 a.m. to 4.30 a.m. each morning, then 13.45 pence outside of the nominated non-peak hours. It's important to stress that everyone has different circumstances and different annual consumption rates than me. But for me, my previous tariff was coming to an end and it was reverting to a variable tariff, which I could actually roll over to a new fixed deal, which would be around um, 13.7 pence per kilowatt hour mark if I went for that variable tariff. So I would have saved £300 alone from charging my electric car 
an electric car would be around a third to a quarter of my whole household energy consumption. So the car has a significant influence on my ongoing electric costs. I also started to set the dishwasher and other appliances to be used or charged during these hours. So I started to use this cheaper time more efficiently among my other household appliances as well. Other reasons to use Octopus Energy include powering all customers on 100% renewable energy. It's which recommended provider four years in a row, including 2021. And the final cool point being we can share £100 free credit if you sign up to their Octopus Go tariff via my refer a friend link in the description below. So not only could you be signing up for a cheaper tariff, but the energy is cheaper on the merits of renewable energy. This is potentially one of the reasons why they haven't increased prices on their electric bills more recently, like the other big six have, that generally rely on a different fuel mix than renewable energy. Octopus Energy are increasing prices for some of their tariffs though, but at the moment the Go or Go Faster tariff have avoided any increases, which to me is just friggin' awesome. The Go Faster tariff extends the 4 hour cheaper period to 5 hours, but it's at a slightly higher rate, I think it's at like 5.5p instead of 5 pence, and potentially at different times too depending on your location so check that out if you can it may be something that's a bit more relevant or works around your circumstances a bit more than what mine does my switch from eon to octopus went really smoothly too it took about a month to six weeks to get it onto the go tariff once your electric account has been switched from your previous provider you will start on their standard variable tariff and it took me a couple of weeks to or so to move to their go tariff as they needed to establish a connection to my existing smart meter to get the 30 minute readings. It's super important for the Go tariff as you will then get accurately charged. So what other quirky EV tariffs are on the market at the moment? So Octopus also has an innovative tariff called Octopus Agile. They effectively monitor the wholesale price of electric and you pay a different rate every 30 minutes. So this tariff is great for electricity usage out of peak hours, more expensive during the peak hours generally. Previously, there have been times where they've literally paid the customer to use electricity at times, which seems totally bonkers because every low comes a high. So during peak at, so during peak times, you can be paying more than the average UK price. Octopus have put a cap at 30, uh, 35 pence per kilowatt hour, but that's almost double the UK average price. Therefore, prices have no daily stability and it generally favours lifestyles where you can move most of your energy demanding behaviour to these non-peak times. If you use the Octopus link in the description, you can still share the same £100 free credit for this tariff. But before you rush into it, please make sure you read up on this tariff as it's very different to a normal tariff. Bulb also offer a EV friendly tariff. Like Octopus, depending on your location in the UK, rates do slightly differ, but its off peak time is different to Octopus's, and in some locations it's even cheaper. Some locations it's more expensive though as well. Therefore, it's very similar to Octopus's offering, but the peak rate was like six pence more expensive for me in the East, in the East Midlands, so overall it's going to cost me more than Octopus, which is why I avoided it. EDF offers a tariff called Go Electric 35 and they offer a off peak price of 4.5 pence so about half a pence cheaper than Octopus for 5 hours instead of 4 but again similar to Bulb their peak hour rate was 12 pence more expensive per kilowatt hour and the standing charge was more expensive than what I'm being offered. Finally, Scottish Power offer a tariff called Smart Power and it's very similar to the above two. 5 hours non-peak, just under 5 pence, but 15 pence peak rate, which is slightly higher than Octopus, but also the daily standing charge was like 20p more than present, which seems pretty steep to me. But your price at your location, again, may be cheaper, so do check these all out and all the tariffs. One thing to bear in mind is if you're using the UMT mobile charger, you may not see the full benefits of these tariffs, or well, not as much as a 7 kilowatts charger, and that's because you can cram in more juice during those non-peak hours. Well, three times more in fact. So you may just want to consider other tariffs at the same time as this really reiterates the point that everyone's circumstances are unique and your offerings and your offering may be different to mine. So please do your own research and hopefully these tariffs just help widen your knowledge and what to look out for. So how do you charge exclusively during these times? 
I actually had this comment the other day, but it's super easy to set up on the Tesla Model 3. Using the inbuilt software, I can schedule it to charge at any time I want. So I set it on my Octopus Go non-peak time of 12.30 a.m. So whenever I'm home, the car knows I'm home. And even though I've connected it to the charger, it won't actually fully deploy the charging until 12.30 a.m. So it's literally programmed in at a car's level not to charge until non-peak times. This setting will be saved as well, so it's not as if I need to manually do this every time if I want to charge from home, or even if I use another charger away from home, charging would st start automatically as intended. So the setting would never interfere and it never becomes inconvenient. It's very smart indeed. Talking about smart, if your 7 kilowatt system is a smart charger, you can actually schedule it on an app level. My popcorn originally didn't have this feature, but the smartphone app was updated just a few months ago to add this feature in. So it, be, it can be done either on a car or potentially an app level. So you have choices on utilizing the non-peak times. Plus, once it's set up, it's pretty much set up to work automatically thereafter too again. Conclusions. So to wrap this up, if you're charging from home, it can really pay to do a little bit of research. You can save hundreds of pounds by doing so and gain £50 extra credit if you use my Octopus link on top of your potential savings. But most importantly, pick the tariff that's going to be more suited to you and your household. Using the tips provided, I've shown even how new EV owners can estimate their charging costs and hopefully you can become more confident when working out the best electric energy tariff for you. If this was useful, please let me know how you got on or just drop me a cheeky little octopus emoji in the comment section below. Remember to share, like the video, subscribe for more Tesla and EV related content if you like videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.